Rangers and Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire prefer to strike from a distance while their animal companion gets up close and personal. They have many passives that increase the effectiveness of ranged weapons and many that buff their animal companion. Rangers are bonded with their animal companion and will take a penalty if it falls in battle. Because you can spend many points buffing it, you can multi-class rangers very effectively, even with melee characters. Choose this class if you like playing from range or if you just like to have a furry friend around. Not surprisingly, bond is the resource of rangers and it is what they spend on active abilities in combat. The amount of bond they will have increases when they gain a power level, allowing them to use more powerful abilities and other abilities more often. This is similar to the fighter's discipline or the barbarian's rage. Each animal companion has its own bonus and knowing what these are helps determine how you will play the ranger. You can only choose one companion, so make sure you select the one most appropriate to your style of fighting. Subclasses have a rather large impact on your bond, so let's move on to those. In this section, we're going to take a look at the subclasses of the ranger and see why you might choose one of them or not. A huge aspect of playing a ranger is their animal companion, and your subclass plays a large role in determining how you will best use it. Let's take a look at what the ranger subclasses are and talk a bit about what sort of builds you can make with them. Ghost Heart. Ghost Heart Rangers prefer the freedom and flexibility that comes from summoning their animal companion on demand. They do not suffer from bonded grief like other rangers, but must bend bond to summon it. Select this subclass if you don't want to use a pet or if you don't want to risk them dying in combat, giving you a penalty. Bonded grief gives you a penalty to might, resolve, and accuracy and occurs when your companion dies during combat normally. Ghost Heart Rangers cannot suffer from bonded grief and when their companion dies during combat, all they need to do is resummon it. The downside is that this costs bond to do so, though you summon very quickly. This subclass is suited for players who want to play a ranger but don't want a companion, or for those who want one but don't want to worry about bonded grief. Ghost hearts can multi-class well with just about any class, however since they will most likely focus on ranged weapon attacks, ideally this would be classes that give benefits to that. Fighter, Paladin, or Chanter all work well here. Fighters have passives that increase damage and discipline strikes increases hit and crit chance which are both useful. If you are certain of the type of weapon you'd like to use, you can choose the Devoted subclass for further increasing your damage with that weapon type. Paladins can use Flames of Devotion at range, which hits like a truck and has increased accuracy. This allows the ranger to dump points from Perception and pump other attributes, because Accurate Wounding Shot gives accuracy as well. It also allows rangers to use weapon modals that reduce accuracy but increase overall damage, like Rapid Shot. Chanters work well if you use Firearms or a Crossbow because they can reduce their reload and recovery time with them. Since rangers have the gunner passive, that further reduces reload time with these weapons, there is a natural synergy here. Try using the pistol moto rapid reload for enhanced attack speed. Sharpshooter. Sharpshooters favor ranged weapons above all other types. They take their time when firing, hitting a bit harder than your standard ranger at the expense of slightly lower recovery time and less deflection. Choose this subclass if you absolutely know you'll be using a ranged weapon. Sharpshooters hit a bit harder but shoot a bit slower and have less deflection than other rangers. Since these bonuses only apply to ranged weapons, players choosing this subclass will most certainly be using one, and all that's left to decide is which type you want. Be sure to study the different ranged weapon types on the wiki and what their modal abilities are. This will help you shape the type of sharpshooter you wish to be. Sharpshooters can multi-class effectively with nearly any class, but it is advised they do so with martial ones. The benefits this subclass provides only apply to weapons and not spells. Some good choices are fighter, paladin, or rogue. Fighters and paladins for the reasons listed in the ghost heart section. Rogues can use their abilities from range, allowing you to build sort of a sniper character. Pierce the Bell hits like a truck and does increase damage from range. Blinding Strike will allow you to set blinded on enemies immediately, which can make you take considerably less damage. Dirty Fighting allows you to convert even more hits to crits. Consider taking the Assassin for further increase to damage while stealthed or invisible. And don't forget to empower your attacks. Stalker. Stalkers prefer to stay near their animal companions and gain bonus deflection and armor for doing so. Take this subclass if you want to melee or tank and have a pet. Stalkers have bonded grief when far away from their animal companion, so it isn't advised they use a ranged weapon unless they plan to stay close. Blunderbuss has a 4 meter range and is a good option if you must use one. This is a great subclass for a player wishing to fulfill the tank role and is comparable to many other tanking subclasses, especially because you can upgrade your animal companion, which can also engage targets and deal damage. When multi-classing a stalker, you'll want a class that benefits from being in melee range or close to it. Fighters, Paladins, and Monks are all good options. Fighters have many tanking passives that allow you to deal damage or stay alive. Paladins have tons of defense and can heal themselves. Monks can help boost your DPS by increasing your action speed and also give you interrupts. You could even play a Shifter Druid alongside your animal companion. No subclass. No subclass rangers have a lot of freedom and don't really miss out on much. Take this one if none of the above sound appealing or you're unsure how you want to play. 
It multi-classes extremely well, so don't be shy. No subclass rangers will play much like the sharpshooter, only that they won't take a penalty to deflection and recovery time. This allows them to use melee or ranged weapons effectively, and is great if you are unsure what weapons you want to use. Highly recommended for new or inexperienced rangers. Multi-classing a no subclass ranger is rather easy because there's really nothing you need to be concerned about. Wounding Shot, the primary attack of the ranger, can be used with any weapon, so there's no need to worry which to choose. In addition, you could be a caster and just take abilities that affect your companion from the ranger ability tree, and take spells from your other class. This is the perfect subclass for that because you don't need to stay nearby, keep recasting every 60 seconds, and you don't suffer a penalty to deflection or recovery time. The last thing we're going to cover here is attributes and races and how they affect the ranger. The game recommends dexterity and intellect, and highly recommends might and perception. Dexterity increases action speed, which is good for getting off more attacks. Intellect increases duration, which helps with wounding shot and heal companion. Might increases damage and healing, and perception helps with accuracy, but more importantly, crit chance. Just exactly how much of these you should have depends on the subclass you selected, and I will make my recommendations along with race here. Ghost Heart. Prioritize might, perception, and intellect. Might will have less of an impact here because you cannot heal your pet, but is still the best attribute. Perception helps with crits, which further increases damage. Intellect will help increase the duration of your animal companion when you summon it. Elf and Godlike are solid choices here. Sharpshooter. Prioritize Might and Perception. Sharpshooters hit harder with ranged weapons, and both these attributes help with that. Amawa, Elf, or Godlike are all good choices. Stalker. Prioritize Might, Resolve, and Constitution. Stalkers will need to be a bit more hardy, especially in the tank role, because they will be in melee range and will take some hits. Take Human, Amawa, or Dwarf here. No Subclass. Prioritize Might. Because no subclass rangers can fulfill nearly any role, what they pick after might will depend on their subclass and preferred style of play. Race will vary. Final tips. A good number of ranger abilities give increased accuracy, more so than any other class in the game. Accuracy not only increases the likelihood you will connect with your target, but also the likelihood you will score a crit. Because of this, rangers benefit more than most classes from having higher crit damage. Keep this in mind when choosing abilities and multiclassing, and be sure to find ones that synergize. As mentioned above, Wounding Shot can be used at any range and has extremely good accuracy. Consider using it with a weapon modal that gives minus accuracy in exchange for increased action speed or damage. Savage Attack and Rushed Reload both come to mind. This will hurt your crit chance but might improve your overall DPS. Rangers are a great choice if you plan to use firearms or weapons that need reloading. Their gunner passive gives minus 20% reload time which is significant because firearms have long ones. Multi-classing with a Chanter, you can knock this down another 20%, as well as reduce recovery time. Rush Reload can also bump it down further and almost negate your reload time completely. Lastly, I wouldn't recommend multi-classing with a Ranger if you have no plans to invest ability points in your Animal Companion, and you don't plan to use firearms. Ranger has very few good active abilities if you don't have a Companion, and the ranged passives are not strong enough versus ones from other classes like Rogue or Fighter. Hopefully this will be fixed, because ranged combat should be part of the main focus of this class. Stay tuned for more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire class guides as we cover all 11 classes, as well as character creation. What did you think of the guide? Was it helpful? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.